Greetings YouTube, welcome back to the channel, happy Wednesday. If you're like me, you want details. You want reward details. You want to know, okay, what if I spend however many units it takes to do this? What are you gonna give me? Am I gonna get to take another six star to rank five? Am I going to get to potentially get some seven star shards? Both are potential expectations for this announcement. But we also know, as the title of this forum post suggests, Act 8, Chapter 2, Blinding Light, more info this Friday, that they want to, and you know, for good reason, hype up their live stream of which they're giving away for the first time ever, a seven-star champion, which means seven stars have to be right around the corner because it would be bizarre to wait weeks or certainly, of course, more than a month to introduce them when someone already has one in the game, even if it's a seven-star Iron Patriot or a seven-star group or a seven-star OG Captain America. So the MCOC team says, Welcome to Act 8, Chapter 2 of Marvel Contest of Champions. By the way, this is a post originally from April 3rd. Uh, it's been a while since the release of Act 8, Chapter 1. We were overjoyed to see so many summoners enjoying the start of Act 8, continuing the saga. Chapter 2 has more of what folks liked about Chapter 1. New quest nodes, custom bosses, exciting rewards. Now, exciting rewards are really exciting when we know about them, right? Uh, latest chapter builds on the weapon node system players made use of in Chapter 1, which was fun. I enjoyed it. With a bold new mechanic that puts the opponent uh, or the power of opponents in the hands of the player. So without further ado, here's the lowdown on the skinny behind Act 8, Chapter 2, Blinding Light, which of course definitely sounds like a modern pop hit. Book 2 content follows a specific structure. One act composed of four chapters. Each chapter consists of six quests. Each quest is composed of six paths with six encounter per path. Three final bosses, one to three choice nodes found just before fighting the final bosses. Choice nodes return to give players a chance to swap out a non-knocked out five or six star champion for another in their roster. Now my question is, will seven star champions be allowed in 8.2 or is this still five or six star champions? Because it does not state specifically in these uh, details that you can swap in a non-knocked out seven star champion. Maybe that's just a typo or maybe you're, they're not gonna allow content. Now for the record, a seven star iron package is gonna be nothing compared to a rank four, rank five, six star Hercules, Ghost, Kitty Pride, heck even Corvus, so many of the top champs, Kingpin, Apocalypse, you know, you name it, we go on and on, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Um, but with that being said, it's still interesting that we have the seven star hype but they haven't included that language in the post. The freshly swapped in champion will enter the quest at full health and ready to rumble. Summoners will find these choice nodes after the final path fight, but just before the final boss is giving players a chance to swap in a champion better suited for the challenges these bosses present. I love that. It's one of the most pro player fair things they've done. So glad it's back. Each quest consists of six paths with an average of 23 nodes per path. Each path also contains six fights plus the final boss. I think that's the perfect amount, especially for building up Hercules on right paths. So I appreciate that. Total cost of completion, 414 energy. Exploration, 2,484 energy. Before we start talking about the new nodes in Chapter 2, it's important to mention the global nodes in every quest intended to empower champions. Adrenaline Rush, Hold the Line, and Pulling Rank, six stars, six star attackers gaining permanent attack bonus based on their rank ranging from plus 100 to plus 2,000. Dang, you lucky six-star Hercules rank five owners. Double-edged sword, story quest content likes to bring interesting new challenges to our summoners, and Act 8 will be no exception. Using what we've learned from nodes in Act 7, we've come up with some set of effects and mechanics that aim to offer the engaging gameplay we strive for without overloading or alienating our summoners. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, sometimes they're still pretty good about that. Like the opening of Act 8, Chapter 2 will feature weapon nodes. Weapon nodes are special buff nodes that give the defender a unique and dangerous beneficial ability, which itself is nothing new. What sets weapon nodes apart from regular old buff nodes is the addition of disarm and unarmed nodes. Disarm nodes allow attackers to disable weapon nodes on defenders by performing certain actions such as well time blocks, wall knockdowns, or intercepting. Once disarmed, the weapon node will go on a cooldown for a short period of time before reactivating. When a weapon node is disarmed, any effects gained or inflicted by it will be removed from both the attacker and the defender. When the cooldown ends, the weapon node reactivates on the defender, leaving the attacker unable to disarm them again for several seconds. 
Unarmed nodes allow attackers to deal a huge amount of extra damage while the defender is disarmed and the weapon node is on cooldown. Unarmed nodes are looking for specific effects or attacks to increase the attacker's damage, such as throwing special ones, inflicting damaging debuffs, or striking the defender's block, uh, which also means Valkyrie could be very valuable in 8.2 and Corvus. Opponents wielding weapon nodes are a little hardier than other champions on the quest map, so we'd recommend playing into the awesome damage bonuses of disarm and unarmed nodes for the best results. For Chapter 2, we've rolled out a brand new mechanic for interacting with weapon nodes, but we'd like to introduce our summoners to capture nodes on the live stream April 14th. And on Act 8, Chapter 2 opens with Karina interrogating... I always butcher this. Cytalus? Sorry. Chapter 1's trap-wielding final boss in the hopes of learning more about her mysterious new foes... Or Orobor Ouroboros? Ouroboros. Again, I'm sure I butchered that. When the infamous assassin only manages to raise more questions, Karina must once more head out into the battle realm to hunt for clues and uncover the true intentions of her enemies. So fortune favors in the live stream release date April 19th, which is a week from today. And then we'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who came out for Act 8, Chapter 2 beta. Uh, It was a good beta. Book 2, Act 2 is well underway, and we're looking forward to hearing from everyone on how you find the start of an exciting new active story quest. So for those of you who have been waiting for this, of course, it is going to be very exciting in a week. I am not sure <laughs> how to feel about it. I know that I always wait sometimes several weeks to even jump in and get my feet wet. That might be the case again. I'll clear event quest content first. We'll see. Either way, exciting news, exciting information, just a lot of hype waiting for the live stream and seven stars. We still don't know if they're going to be allowed, even if they're available in 8.2 i would imagine so though right like wouldn't that be weird to not let them in maybe it's just a a typo or a uh, information setback for this post either way let me know your thoughts on this thanks for the feedback